This is a short video that was created to cover the contents of USAID's ADS 300 MAA, the Independent Government Cost Estimate Guide and Template. The document was created for use by Agreement Officers' Representatives, or AOR, Contracting Officers' Representatives, COR, Program Analysts, or Activity Managers, and Budget Officers. It provides acronyms, general information on roles and responsibilities, definitions, guidance and tips for preparing an IGCE, types of estimates, methodologies for developing an estimate, and a template that should be used for creating an estimate. What is an IGCE? The Independent Government Cost Estimate is the U.S. government's estimate of costs that a contractor may incur in performing services and or providing supplies to achieve the government's objectives. It serves as the basis for reserving funds during acquisition planning. It provides the basis for comparing costs or price proposed by offers. And it serves as an objective basis for determining price reasonableness in cases where only one offer responds to a solicitation. What are the key roles and responsibilities associated with the development of an IGCE? An IGCE is not developed by a single person. It is the result of a team of experts who are dedicated to the overall success of the source selection and contract administration. There are three key roles responsible for developing the IGCE the planner, the contracting officer, and cost price analyst staff. The planner or activity manager, AOR or COR, is responsible for planning and drafting the procurement request, including the statement of work, performance work statements, and statement of objectives, program descriptions, and preparing the IGCE. The activity unit itself is the principal source of data to develop the IGCE from its familiarity with program design philosophy and previous or related program executions and their metrics. The contracting officer is responsible for coordinating with and supporting the activity manager to define the acquisition or assistance award requirements. The cost price analysis staff assists both the activity manager and the contracting officer or assistance officer to prepare the IGCE. They help classify cost categories and validate assumptions. One of the purposes of the IGCE is to be able to perform analysis on the contractor's cost or price proposal to determine their fair and reasonableness. Before we talk about the methods to develop and use an IGCE, let's first define the terms and definitions that are deeply associated with IGCEs. Commercial items are any item, other than real property, that is of a type customarily used for non-governmental purposes and that has been sold, leased, or licensed to the general public, or it has been offered for sale, lease, or licensed to the general public. Price is the amount of money that a buyer pays a seller for the delivery of a product or the performance of a service. Cost is a component of price. Cost is a monetary measure of the expenditure for capital and labor required to complete contract performance. Direct costs are those costs that are directly charged to activities or services that are necessary to specific performance and required for and easily traced to a particular project. The cost for these activities are usually charged to projects on an item by item basis such as salaries, and fringe benefits for project staff, travel, supplies, etc. Indirect costs are costs for activities or services that benefit more than one project. Their precise benefits to a specific project are often difficult or impossible to trace. General and administrative expenses and overhead expenses are both indirect costs. We'll talk about those two in more depth a bit later. Fringe benefits are non-salary compensations for employees. Some examples of fringe benefits are group health or dental insurance, paid vacation and sick leave, 
housing, retirement benefits, unemployment insurance, and tuition reimbursement. The fringe benefit rate is the percentage rate that represents the cost of an individual employee's non-salary benefits. The rate is applied to an employee's base salary, or the money earned by the employee, to calculate the burden cost, total salary cost, divided by compensation, incurred by the company to employ an individual. As such, to determine the amount of an individual's compensation in a proposal budget, the base salary is multiplied by the applicable fringe benefit rate percentage. General and Administrative, or GNA, expenses is the cost of activities necessary to the overall operation of the business as a whole, but for which a direct relationship to the specific program cannot be shown. It is usually expressed as a percentage of some base, which distributes the cost equitably among the contractor's projects. GNA includes human resources, accounting, finance, public relations, contract administration, legal, and an expense allocation from the corporate home office. The expense is spread across all agreements or contracts. The overhead rate is the percentage rate that represents expenses that are incurred by an identifiable unit or activity of the offerer or applicant's internal organization, such as engineering or manufacturing department directly related to execution of the sponsored program. The expense is spread across all agreements and contracts. Other direct costs are costs that refer to expenditures which are allowed as a direct charge to a sponsored project, such as travel, consultants, supplies, or materials that are incidental but necessary to carry out the project. We generally perform cost analysis or price analysis on cost proposals. We use the IGCE as a basis for determining price reasonableness and realism. The use of cost estimating relationships such as rough yardsticks or ratios aid us in quickly analyzing price and cost. Some cost estimating relationships are dollar per pound, miles per hour, and cost per square foot. Cost analysis is the review and evaluation of the separate elements including profit or fee of the offeror's proposal to determine if the projected cost is a fair and reasonable price based on the offeror's assumptions. Price analysis is the process of deciding if the asking price for a product, service, or program is fair and reasonable without examining the specific cost elements and profit the vendor used in arriving at the price. A final general comment on definitions. In reading any document, there must be a common understanding of the definitions in order for the reader to fully understand the subject matter being discussed. Therefore, do not gloss over any of the definitions. The guide provides some general information and best practices. As we stated earlier, an IGCE is the government's own estimated cost or price of the proposed acquisition or assistance activity. The government may not provide this information to contractors. A well-constructed and supported IGCE serves as the basis for budgeting and reserving funds for future requirements. It provides a baseline for comparing costs or prices proposed by offerors. It is an objective basis for determining price reasonableness in cases in which only one offeror responds to a solicitation. IGCEs demonstrate that due diligence was executed to reasonably estimate the cost of performance. Finally, a comprehensive IGCE leads to more accurate projections of the government's budget requirements for its program. The extent and depth of the preparation of IGCE is determined by the availability of price or cost data and assumptions, the estimator's skills, time constraints, type of item, program or service purchased, type of contractual action and agency policy, and procedures. While the planner, AOR or COR, is responsible for preparing the IGCE, they do so with the support from the contracting officer as well as other acquisition specialists. The estimate should include the method used to develop the IGCE. This includes supporting calculations, specific currency, data sources used, assumptions, and rationale. 
the planner should match the projected amounts to budget elements of individual task requirements, program period of performance, and other requirements in the requirements documents. Some common quantitative measure that can be used to project cost are direct labor charges, escalation, other direct cost, general and administrative cost, and profit or fee. In developing the estimate, the planner must estimate the reasonable cost that a contractor may bear in performing the required services or providing the supplies. A cost is considered reasonable if it reflects the action that a prudent business person would have taken at the time it was incurred. The IGCE is not set in stone and should be revised when necessary. Revision should reflect new price or cost information, the revision of government requirements, changed budgetary amounts or changes in source material that support price reasonableness benchmarks used to determine the estimate. The guide includes some tips for preparing the IGCE. The following tips are meant to aid you in handling and developing your IGCE. Ensure that all cost elements for goods and services for each task or requirement or development outcome is included in the IGCE. Employ proper data collection and estimating methodology. Document data sources, assumptions, constraint, methodology, and subject matter expert inputs. Use salient characteristics as opposed to brand name to obtain quotations. Revise the IGCE based on new price or cost information and revised or new requirements. Do not share the IGCE with anyone outside the designated procurement team. The document is procurement sensitive and access should be granted on a need to know basis only. Do not reveal information which may give any one organization an unfair competitive advantage. Do not use the contractor's cost proposal or quotation as your IGCE. Do not take the budget and back into the IGCE. If you are unsure about the handling or development of an IGCE, consult your contracting officer. An IGCE is not the lowest or the highest possible estimated cost or price for performance. It is the government's projection of the cost of the program. Upon receipt of proposals, there may be a significant difference between the IGCE and proposed costs by the offeror. There should be sufficient information in the IGCE to allow for the explanation of the differences between the documents. Your contracting officer and the price cost analyst will use your rationale and assumptions that you included with your IGCE and document the difference. There are two common types of estimating that are presented in your IGCE guide. The price estimate is generally used for supplies, equipment, and simple services that are routinely available on the open market at competitive prices. The price estimate is required on all requirements and must be independently developed. The price estimate does not break down into the various cost elements but depends upon the bottom line prices paid or available in the marketplace. When developing the price estimate, focus should be placed on prices and quotes such as published or current catalog prices, previous prices, and quantity purchased, quantity of items to be purchased, and market surveys, and other miscellaneous sources of pricing data. The cost estimate is a detailed projection of the expenditures the applicant or offerer may incur in performance and requires a review of all cost elements anticipated in performance of the contract. A detailed estimate is required for services, construction, and non-commercial supplies estimated to exceed the simplified acquisition threshold. Costs are generally divided into the primary cost elements of labor, payroll additives, burden or fringe, other direct costs, indirect costs, general and administrative costs, and profit or fee. Every cost estimate will be based on projections and cannot be predicted with absolute certainty. Generally speaking, there are three common cost estimating methods, lump sum, top down, and bottom up. In some instances, a combination of these methods may be used. The lump sum estimate projects the cost on a bottom line basis. 
This type of estimate may be useful when the ultimate award price can be determined without examining individual cost elements. Two methods of lump sum estimating are round table and comparison. When using round table estimating, experts develop the estimate based on their technical expertise and knowledge of the market. The degree of accuracy is dependent on the expertise of the participants. When using comparison estimating, the proposed costs are based on previously completed assistance and acquisition program costs that are similar to the current requirement. The known costs are adjusted by adding or subtracting elements of material, time, and economic or inflationary changes as necessary. This method is used when relatively few adjustments are needed to develop the estimate. Whenever a record of prices previously paid for a similar requirement is available, attach a copy of this record to the current estimate. The top-down is commonly called the parametric or ballpark approach and is based upon pricing major measurable units. It requires collecting and organizing historical data and relating it to the performance output being estimated. When making any estimates based on historical data, adjustments have to be made for the specific work required and for cost increases or decreases due to differing requirements, economic conditions, etc. Cost projections may be made based on the use of formulas or cost and price estimating relationships. The top-down method would be used in the early planning stages of a project when the precise quantities or needs are not yet known or when requirements are not fully known or detailed specifications are not available. The estimate would result in an order of magnitude projections of cost and would have to be refined as the work product becomes more defined. The top-down approach may not detail all peripheral or incidental costs such as travel, site preparation, cost regulatory permits, specific professional licenses requirement, hardware or software costs, but estimates of the cost of these items should be included and document in the rationale for the estimate. The bottom-up method is prepared whenever the needs are well-defined. Each program should have as a top priority preparing well-defined requirement documents. This includes your statement of work, performance work statement, program description, and other such documents prior to even considering a solicitation. There are seven easy steps to develop a bottom-up estimate. Isolate all program and project required tasks by deliverables for the activity or project. Identify the resources required to complete all tasks. Ascertain dependencies or reliances among tasks within the activity or project. Estimate costs for all tasks such as labor, travel, supplies and commodities, subcontractor, and other direct costs. Determine when tasks should be completed. Check to ensure you have included all tasks and their projected costs for an activity. Roll up the cost to an aggregate amount to establish your program estimate. The bottom-up approach is commonly called the detailed estimate and represents the opposite end of the cost estimating spectrum. It presumes that the total effort can be separated into organized tasks or activities and pricing can be applied to each element such as labor, overhead, travel, equipment, and other direct costs. The data for a bottom-up estimate has to be very detailed and represents the accumulative experiences of previous and similar projects. When using the IGCE template, you must save the IGCE as an Excel file or it will lose some of the formulas. You should always use a blank template and not reuse a previous IGCE when creating a new IGCE. This is a good basic practice that ensures you do not accidentally pull in data that does not apply to your requirement, thus inflating or deflating the estimates. Do not delete sheets, rows, or columns when preparing the IGCE, as this may also delete functions embedded in linked cells or worksheets. For this reason, columns and rows that are not used for the IGCE should always be hidden, not deleted. The most current version of the template is available within Glass. Prior to starting the IGCE, you are strongly encouraged to watch the tutorial and instructional video. This video will provide step-by-step -step instructions and an overview of the template. 
Once the IGCE is complete, the planner should review all of the calculations manually to ensure no errors were made within the worksheet. Thank you for viewing this presentation on the IGCE. You should refer to the Federal Acquisition Regulation, USAID's ADAR, and the IGCE Guide and Template if you are tasked with developing an IGCE for your project.